WBAF, Kansas City. And Henry, WBAF local news at 11, the outlook for Kansas City fell warmer. Kansas City, Missouri fire officials say arsonists set the blaze on a vacant residence at 40th and Woodland tonight. No loss estimate was made since the residence was unoccupied. Firemen say arson is also suspected in a blaze that completely engulfed a vacant house at 70th and Monroe tonight. Dr. Robert Medcamp, superintendent of Kansas City, Missouri schools, was one of the witnesses today in a contempt of court hearing against the Kansas City Teachers Union. Medcamp testified he was instructed by the Board of Education to close the district's 100 schools when it was determined teaching staff was inadequate to continue classes. No contract negotiations were held today, the beginning of the fourth week of the strike. The school district has offered teachers a blanket 5.5% salary increase, but union teachers have rejected that proposal. Meantime, unions in the construction industry in Kansas City are apparently satisfied negotiations on new contracts are going smoothly. Pickets were removed today from ready-mix plants and construction sites, and the building industry returned to normal as negotiations continue. Defense testimony began today in the federal court bribery and prostitution conspiracy trial of Thomas Daly and Anthony Russo in Kansas City, Kansas. Of the hour, on the hour, from American Information Radio. This is Dan Streeter from New York, and at this hour, a federal appeals court has ordered the integration of Denver schools next fall on a complicated formula, redrawing boundaries, and assigning white and minority students to share classrooms on a half-day basis. In Denver, we asked attorney Gordon Greiner, who helped win the ruling, to explain the integration plan for the elementary schools. The pairing concept... Uh really aligns a, an Anglo school and a minority school and uh, provides that for approximately four hours a day or, or through and including the lunch hour, uh, kids in each of those schools will exchange. Greiner says this means elementary students in Denver will attend two different schools each day. The National School Boards Association meeting in Houston has gone on record supporting busing to achieve racial balance in schools. The tax matter isn't closed. That story coming up. Hi, Jerry David personnel. I'm C. Ooh, your record's terrific. With grades with honors, I see. And you got your degree. Well, great. And some are employed and some really good friends. Yeah, learning all the ropes, huh? Well, there's no question about it. We certainly have a job for a bright college grad like you, if your typing's as good as your grades. This is job discrimination based on sex, and it's against the law. The young women of our country who have worked hard to earn their college degrees deserve the same breaks as young male graduates who often move into executive training jobs straight out of college. Stereotyping women constantly as office workers only is just not fair. And it's a waste. Women power, it's much too good to waste. This message sponsored by the Now Legal Defense and Education Fund, 127 East 59th Street, New York, New York. ABC's David Schumacher reports from Washington that the Internal Revenue Service is still investigating President Nixon's tax returns for evidence of fraud. Schumacher reports the special Watergate prosecutor's office has been called into the investigation, which now apparently centers on California tax lawyer Frank DeMarco, who signed many of the president's tax papers. A mathematics instructor at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology has released a study showing that a baby born in the U.S. this year has a greater chance of being killed than a combat soldier in World War II. In Cambridge, Massachusetts, Dr. Arnold Barnett told us, the main finding of the paper, I think, is that homicide is probably far more danger than is widely believed. Uh, uh, even if we assume the current rates continue throughout the future, in other words, there's no further homicide growth, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, approximately 2% of the babies born in America this year can be expected to die of murder. This is at current rates. Barnett also says that male babies born in the nation's largest cities face an even greater chance of being eventual murder victims. 
Henry Aaron broke Babe Ruth's record tonight. Aaron hit his 715th career home run in Atlanta as the Braves beat the Dodgers. To offset rising fuel prices, TWA and Pan American Airlines are asking the government for federal subsidies on their overseas routes to remain competitive with foreign airlines that are subsidized by their governments. Here in New York, TWA President F.C. Weiser was asked what the airlines will do if they don't get the subsidy. I think it would be necessary in long term that we reduce uh, the number of flights that we fly internationally and eliminate some of the de destinations which we now serve because of the increased price of fuel, which requires us to serve only the number of flights uh, that provide uh, enough passengers for us to cover our cost. Weiser also says that additional fare increases could prevent a lot of people from traveling by air. This is Information Radio News. From the Kirk Murray Sports Desk, baseball history was made tonight in Atlanta. Hank Aaron broke Babe Ruth's home run record by slamming a homer in the bottom of the fourth inning of the Braves' home opener against pitcher Al Downing of the L.A. Dodgers. Here's the way it happened. Al Downing, looking it over, going into the windup now, and delivering. That Babe Ruth record stood for 39 years. The Cleveland Indians have had to cancel tomorrow's home opener against Milwaukee because of snow, up to four inches of it. They'll try to play Wednesday. The Kansas City Royals will be hosting the Oakland A's Wednesday. It'll be Paul Splitoff against Catfish Hunter. And a superior court has denied Wilt Chamberlain's request to play for the San Francisco Conquistadors in tonight's ABA playoff game with Utah. The Kansas City forecast fair and cool tonight, sunny and warmer tomorrow. Tonight's low in the low to middle 30s, the top tomorrow in the upper 60s. Dan Henry, WDAF News. The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Marshall, bidding you welcome to the sound of suspense. Welcome to the fear you can hear. Welcome to the world of mystery. This is a tale of young love. The love of a charming young man for a charming young girl. It is also the story of a mother's love for her child. As you can see, this story is positively dripping with love. But don't be dismayed. Because love, like a door, has two sides. And when the other side is hatred, it can drip with venom and gore. You're a liar, Mr. Snowden. Don't you think I know what you are? You're wrong, Mrs. Daniels. I love your daughter. Why? Because I do, that's all. You can't explain something like that. Listen to me, young man. Even her own father couldn't bear to look at Bonnie's face. That's why he left her so much money, because he felt guilty for what he felt for his own poor, homely daughter. Mrs. Daniels, listen to me. You're a liar. A liar. And a thief. <laughs> mystery drama, The Locked Room, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Henry Slesser and stars Jack Grimes and Corrine Orr. It is sponsored in part by new sugar-free diet 7-Up and by the Kellogg Company, makers of Kellogg's Special K cereal. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Oh, somebody's been drinking my sugar-free diet 7-Up, and it's all Oh, well, actually, I saved a little. Oh, a bear! Hi there, Goldie. What's brewing? That's Miss Goldilocks to you. Oh, come on, kid. You mean you don't remember me? The cottage, the three chairs, the porridge? <gasps> baby bear! In the fur. Been a long time, Goldie. But baby bear... Please call me BB. You drank all the sugar-free diet 7-Up, and I have to 
conduct another diet drink taste test today. Well, yeah, I saw the sign on the door, a professional taste tester. Huh? But how can I conduct my taste test now? Why bother? I try those other diet drinks, too. You'll notice there's still plenty of them around. Why not ask me? Well, okay, B.B. Tell me. Why did you drink all the sugar-free Diet 7-Up? I like the taste. Light, fresh, natural, sugar-free Diet 7-Up is definitely unbearably delicious. Mm -hmm. The Marines are looking for a few good men. Men who want to learn good jobs. And today, a qualified man can choose the direction he wants to go in the Marine Corps. Choose the kind of skills he wants to learn. Like computers, aircraft maintenance, or electronics, radio communications, food services, aviation technology. You name it, Marines do it. If you want to learn it, the Marines will teach you skills, responsibility, and leadership in any field you can handle. Remember... Qualified men can choose their own directions in the Marine Corps. Skills to learn, careers to build in many directions. The Marines are looking for a few good men who want to choose their own directions, want to learn good jobs, want to be Marines. that winds its way into the hilly regions upstate. The hour is late, and the sleek white sports car whose hood ornament faces north is the only vehicle for miles around. Even the sound of its purring engine doesn't seem to disturb the quiet of the countryside. But inside the car, the sound level is something very different. <laughs> Davy, please, turn that down before I go deaf. Oh, what's the matter? Don't you like music? Yeah, that's why I'm trying to save my hearing. Okay, okay. Yeah, is that any better? Much. Hey, uh, how much longer is this going to take? You said it was only 30 miles or so to the house, and we must have driven 50. We have not. You're not watching the mileage. Listen, there are so many gadgets on this dashboard, I wouldn't even know where the speedometer is. But you do like the car, don't you? Like it? Hey, Bonnie, do you know what I've been used to driving all my life? Second-hand pickup trucks. That's about all uh, our folks could afford. I hated this car at first when Mother gave it to me. I mean, she must have thought it was what every young girl wanted on her 17th birthday. But the truth is, I was scared sick of it. Well, why should you be? I don't know. Just why? It always felt like it was running away with me. Ah, but now you're running away with it. And me. Well, I don't feel that way. I don't feel we're running away, baby. Oh, of course not, kid. Not that it was just a figure of speech. Baby, look! Hmm? We're almost there! Oh, there's the old red barn I told you about. Hey, great. Uh, do I make a right here? Yeah, a sharp right. And then straight up the hill until you come to the sun. If it's still there. It was the last time you were here, anyway. About ten years? <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, that's right. I was only eight when we left. Oh. Davy, there it is. You can see the chimneys. Oh, wow. Yeah, how many chimneys does the house have? <laughs> it seemed like hundreds. There was a fireplace in every room except the bathroom. We can see it, Davy. Oh, just wait. Well, there it is. What do you think? Now, that's what I call a real funky old house. How big is that place? It has four floors, and I guess about a... Oh, 30 or 40 rooms. I never counted them. All those rooms and nobody living in them? I know. It does seem like a terrible waste, doesn't it? Oh, Bonnie, you're speaking to one room, Davy Snowden, remember? The only place I lived in my whole life with more than one room was the farmhouse. Yeah, well, that had three. Oh, I wish you wouldn't keep talking about that. I mean, you know, how poor you were. <laughs> okay, kitten. Rich little girls get to feeling guilty when they hear stuff like that. Uh, look, let's not uh, sit out in the car all night, huh? Let's go look at that old haunted house. It is not a haunted house. Uh, are you sure you got the key now? Yeah, right here in my purse. Uh, and, and the lights are working? I told you, we rent the place every summer. We have to keep the electricity turned on. Well, let's go then. I 
There's a light switch right near the door. Yeah, here it is. There. Look at the size of this place. I know. It's a terrible old barn of a place. That's what my father called it. When he died, well, Mother just thought it was foolish, the two of us living here all by ourselves. Looks kind of run down. I'm afraid it is. But the foundation is still solid. Well, there's plenty of furniture. Hey, uh, come on. Show me the rest of the house, huh? What would you like to see first? Well, upstairs. That's where the bedrooms are, right? Yes. Well, that's the first thing we have to do. Decide which bedroom we want. Oh, baby. Do you love me, Bonnie? Oh, you know I do. Say it. I love you. Say, I love you, Davey. I love you, Davey. Well, in that case, let's pick out the bedroom. How many choices do we have? At least ten. Oh, it might take us all night. Come on. <laughs> I like the look of that one. It's too yick, gloomy. That was my mother's room. You mean your folks had their own room? That's right. Well, maybe that's how they do things when you're rich. But me, I'm just a country boy. Now, let's see about this door. Hey, uh, this one's stuck. No, it's locked. It's always been locked. Well, what for? I don't know. Well, what's behind it? Another bedroom? Honestly, I don't have the faintest idea. It's been locked ever since I can remember. Daddy once told me never to go near this room. Once I remember my mother talking about it, sort of nervously. Oh, that sounds very mysterious. You know, what do you say we break it in, huh? Oh, Davy, no, we can't do that. Well, gee, aren't you curious? Maybe it's full of hanging women, like in Bluebeard's castle. Or maybe that's where the family jewels are hidden. Oh, let's leave it alone, Davy. I was always scared of that door. Yeah, but what's it locked for? Seems to me when the door is locked, that means there's something pretty interesting behind it. Stands to reason, right? Well, I'm sure it's just some old storeroom or something. Bonnie, listen, there could be something valuable in there. Something worth money. And since the house is yours... I mean, this is your house, isn't it? Your father left it to you, didn't he? Yes. Well, if there's anything valuable in there, it belongs to you. Oh, Davy, All those promises not to talk about money. I'm not talking about your mother's money. I'm talking about what's yours, rightfully yours. But... The house isn't really mine. Not yet. Not until I'm 21, and that's almost four years from now. Now, don't be technical. Oh, Davy. Okay. Oh, okay, if that's how you feel about it. we got plenty of time, anyway. Davy, remember what you said about the fire? Uh, it's getting late, Bonnie. Uh, don't you think we should be in bed? Couldn't we have a fire first, please? Sure. Anything you say. We want this night to be perfect, don't we? Yeah, I guess I am a little like that. Boastful about my poor childhood. As if it's a badge of honor or something. Uh, we didn't light fires because they were cozy and romantic, only because they made us warm. They're not very warm at that. Mm. Locked rooms. Yeah, that's really something. A locked room. The only room in our place that had a lock on it was the outhouse. And even that didn't work. Hey, you asleep? Hey, kid, wake up. It's time to go to bed. Come on, Bonnie, wake up. Oh, no. Hey, what's that? Pete's sake, there's a car outside. Hey, Bonnie, wake up. There's somebody coming up. What? We got company. Oh, no. Well, who is it? Oh, Davy, it can't be. Yes. That's her car outside. You can see it through the window. You mean it's a neighbor or something? No, it's my mother. Oh, wow. Oh, I have to let her in. She knows I'm here. She saw my car outside. Oh. I'm surprised you two aren't in bed already. That was the general idea, wasn't it? Mother, please, let me explain. I suppose you're David Snowden. Uh, yes, I am, Mrs. Daniels. I see we have no trouble recognizing each other. Bonnie, fix your clothes. They're a mess. I, I was just lying on the rug in front of the fireplace. Yes, I've... Um, I've heard all about you, Mr. Snowden. 
Thank goodness I had the sense to think of this place when Bonnie didn't show up at home. You have it all wrong, Mother. Davy, tell her. Mrs. Daniels. Never mind. I understand everything. I was afraid something like this might happen as soon as Bonnie started mentioning you in her letters from school. Bonnie, get your things. We're going home. Mrs. Daniels, listen to me. Sorry to break up your party, young man. We're married, Mrs. Daniels. What did you say? Bonnie and I were married this afternoon. I've got the license right here. It's I... true, Mother. We, we were married in Elkton. That, that can't be. You're underage. Not in Elkton, Mother. Eighteen is old enough. I... Davy and I are married, so you can't tell us what to do. For the love of heaven. I... Uh... I think I have to sit down. Oh, well, here, Mrs. Daniels. I'll just get the sheet off this chair Mother, here. please try to understand. I... I understand, Bonnie. I... I went through a dozen Davies when I was your age. Oh, Bonnie. Oh... Oh, my poor Bonnie. Well, now, you, you don't have to feel sorry for her, Mrs. Daniels. Don't I? No, be, because I love her. I suppose you have no money. Mother! Be quiet. No, Mrs. Daniels. My family were farm people. My father's dead, my mother's alive, but I don't even know where. But you don't have to worry about that, Mrs. Daniels. I didn't marry your daughter because of money. Didn't you? No, I didn't. Bonnie and I talked about it. I almost didn't marry her because of that, because of what people like you would say. You're a liar, Mr. Snowden. Don't you think I know what you are? You're wrong, Mrs. Daniels. I love your daughter. Why? Why? Because I do, that's all. You can't explain something Listen like that. Listen young man. Even her own father couldn't bear to look at Bonnie's face. That's why he left her so much money, because he felt guilty at what he felt for his own poor, homely daughter. <laughs> oh, Mother, don't please. Mrs. Daniels, listen to me. You're a liar. A liar and a thief. Stop it. Stop it. You've got a smooth tongue, Mr. Snowden. A, a handsome face and a smooth tongue. And I'm sure you've convinced my daughter that you're utterly sincere. <laughs> but it's only her heart you want to steal, not her fortune. I love Bonnie. That's all there is to it. We're married and there's nothing you can do about it. You're quite wrong. There's everything in the world I can do about it. I intend to have this marriage annulled immediately. You can't do that. You have no idea how much money can do, young man. Bonnie, I'm, um, I'm going home now, and I want you to come with me. No, no, I Don't won't. Don't make it any worse than it is now. I won't go with you. You, uh, see how it is, Mrs. Daniels? Yes. I see how it is. Very well, Bonnie. But you'll regret this. Mark my word. Mother, I can't live without Davy. If you make us separate, I'll never forgive you. You will, darling. Strangely enough. I'll kill myself. Do you hear, Mother? I'll kill myself if you do this. Now, don't talk nonsense. You think your heart will break. <laughs> but it won't. A heart doesn't break. It withers. That's what I don't want you to find out. <sighs> Goodbye, Bonnie. I mean it! I'll kill myself! Oh, Davy. <laughs> As Shakespeare informed us, the course of true love never did go smooth. And perhaps the same applies to the course of untrue love. But let's not judge the sincerity of young Davy Snowden just yet. Let's wait and see what happens next to the newlyweds when we return shortly with Act Two. And now, another story of the ball and chain as Kellogg's Special K presents The Library. Welcome to the public library. May I help you, sir? Uh, yes, I'd like to check out... Uh, I'd like to check out Famous Laundromats of the World by Audrey Schnorbart. Sir, excuse me, but isn't that ball and chain you're wearing just like the ones they use in the Kellogg Special K commercial? Uh, this ball and chain? Shh, yes, that one. How are you going to get rid of it? Well, you know, lots of good exercises, and by eating smart at every meal, starting with the Special K breakfast. Don't you have to watch your calories? Yes, and the Special K breakfast is less than 240 calories. Less than 240 calories? 
Right. A one-ounce bowl of high-protein Special K, four ounces of skim milk, tomato juice, and coffee. It's really tasty, and it's going to help me get rid of this ball and chain. I'd say it's <laughs> long overdue, get it? Your happy ending could begin with the Special K breakfast from Kellogg's. for working with lead, a roofer exposed to benzpyrene and other hydrocarbons. All of us breathing carbon black from tire dust. Is there a connection? Lead, hydrocarbons, tire dust. Is there a connection between them and cancer? We intend to find out because it could mean lives saved. This is part of a tremendous project being done by the American Cancer Society with the cooperation of unions and industry plus tens of thousands of volunteer researchers surveying a million of their neighbors. A People Helping People project. We want to wipe out cancer in your lifetime. Please give generously to your American Cancer Society. return to the locked room. The door we're looking at right now isn't the door to the old Daniels mansion upstate. This door is reached by walking up several long flights of stairs before you can read the faded numerals 4G. Uh, are, are we there, Davy? Yeah, honey, here we are. Hey, you're wounded pretty bad. No, I'm all right. <laughs> I warned you that I'm not very strong. And I warned you that a fourth-floor walk-up is no fun. We don't have anywhere else to go, Davy. Yeah, I know that, all right. Well, brace yourself. Here's the uh, Snowden residence. I uh, suppose I should carry you over the threshold. <laughs> well, come on in, come on in. Don't just stare at it. It's uh, not at all bad, Davy. Really. Oh, you don't have to say that. Don't. Don't say anything except, I love you. That's always nice to hear. You know that I love you, Davy. Then close the door and show me. Oh, Davy. Uh, Davy, I'm so worried. Yeah, yeah, I knew that my room would affect you that way. I don't care about the room. Anywhere is all right if I'm with you. We'll get along. And then I'll have the money my father left me. Yeah, yeah, and three years, if you survive that long. I'm sure my mother will change her mind about us. I'm sure of it. As soon as she gets to know you... Oh, Bonnie, couldn't you tell? It was hate at first sight. She took one look at me, and it was hate kill. Davy, do you think she can really do what she said? Get her marriage annulled? I don't know. It was a legal marriage. I mean, you didn't need parental consent in that state. But she's so smart about such things. She's run my father's company since he died. She has all these lawyers on her payroll. Stop worrying about it, Bonnie. But what if she could do it? I couldn't stand that, Davy. Stop worrying, I said. You got one thing going for you, kitten, and that makes all the difference in the world. Your mother loves you. She wouldn't hurt you for anything. Davy? Tell me the truth. Do, do you think I'm homely? I think you're beautiful. Oh, I know that isn't true, but I'm not really repulsive, am I? <laughs> Are you kidding? Come here. Oh, Davy. Uh... It's true about my father. I know that. He was so disappointed that I wasn't pretty. He must have needed glasses. <laughs> Who's that? Nobody even knows I'm here. Hmm. Gallo? Is this Mr. David Snowden? Uh, yeah, that's right. Who, who, who's this? My name is Hedinger, Mr. Snowden. I'm an attorney. Hedinger and Doles. Uh, we're on Vanderbilt Street. Yeah, so? One of my clients is Mrs. Harriet Daniels. I'm uh, sure the name is familiar to you. Uh, yes, I've heard of her. I was wondering if we couldn't get together to discuss a certain matter uh, regarding her daughter, Bonnie. Uh, you mean my wife, Bonnie? Who is it, Davy? Yes, that's right. 
I wonder if it would be convenient for you to come to my office uh, sometime this afternoon. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Hedinger, but Mrs. Snowden and myself are a little busy at the moment. Well, um, what about tomorrow, then? Would that be possible? Is it my father's lawyer? Yeah, one of them anyway. I beg your pardon? Uh, uh, all, all right, Mr. Hedinger. I'll, I'll, I'll come to your office tomorrow. Uh, say, uh, about 10 o'clock? That would be just fine. The address is 50 Vanderbilt. We're on the 21st floor. I'll be there. Well, it looks like the fun is starting. Oh, Davy. Please sit down, Mr. Snowden. I think you know the situation as well as I do. And uh, you've probably anticipated my first question. Well, I'm not sure I have, unless it's, uh, why don't I just go away and stop bothering her daughter? It's, uh, something like that. But it would be hardly sensible to expect you to do such a thing without, um, incentive. Oh, now, wait a minute. Don't, don't tell me I'm about to get an offer, a, a money offer. Nobody's talking about a bribe, I assure you. There's a practical reason for such an offer. Annulment proceedings, no matter how certain we are of success, cost money. Mrs. Daniels could actually realize quite a savings if you cooperated for some uh, flat figure, um, say $5,000. Not unreasonable of her. Uh, do me a favor, huh? You tell Mrs. Daniels that I wouldn't give up my marriage license for one million bucks. I notice you specify one million. So long, Mr. Hedden. Uh, please sit down. Hmm? That wasn't all I had to tell you. Okay. What else is there? We can sue for annulment on a few other bases. Such as what? Falsification of your marriage certificate, for instance. Falsific? What the heck are you talking about? Your uh, age, for instance. You're not 24, Mr. Snowden. You happen to be 30. Well, what's so important about that, for Pete's sake? You gave your age as, uh, 24. Well, so what? Everybody knocks a few years off their age at some time or other. It's, uh, it's just business. Let's see, um, your business is freight forwarding, isn't it? You work in a three-man company at a salary of $145 a week. <laughs> Surely you didn't think it was necessary to, uh dye your hair or anything like that for the sake of uh, executive advancement. Look, Mr. Hedinger, first of all, I'm 29, not 30. I'm a few days premature, I suppose. You'll be 30 next week, won't you? Happy birthday, in case I don't see you. I just didn't want Bonnie to think I was too old for her. Don't make everything so difficult, Mr. Snowden, because you know how it's going to end. Mrs. Daniels is the most determined woman you've ever met in your life. She uh, scares the pants off me, I can tell you. Oh, well, that's your problem. If she has to spend a million dollars to get Bonnie out of your clutches, she'll do it. I'll guarantee you 10000 if you'll sign an agreement. I'm sorry, Mr. Head, and you no can do. You're a stupid boy, do you know that? Uh, sorry, I take that back. A stupid... Man. So long, Mr. Hedinger. Give my best to Bonnie's mother. And tell her we're both very happy. Oh, Davy, it's horrible. We don't have a chance. I know we don't. Well, it doesn't look good, that's for sure. You should have told me the truth. You should have told me you were really 27. But I, I, I don't know. I just... I just didn't want you to think that I was still an undergraduate at that age. Oh, there's got to be some way out, Davy. There has to be. If you could just talk to her. She won't give me the chance. She's made up her mind that all I want is your lousy money. Well, what if there wasn't any money? What if I signed away the rights to the money my father left me? That would make her believe us, wouldn't it? Well, I, well that's uh, a pretty drastic, kitten. I, I mean, that money is yours, uh, you know, when you come of age, you're entitled to it. But I don't care about money, Davy. You, you don't now, maybe, but later. Uh, I, I couldn't have you making that kind of sacrifice for me, Bonnie. You probably hate me for it later. Oh, I could never hate you. I love you so much. I think I'll love you after I'm dead, Davy. Davy, 
What are you thinking? Nothing. Davy, you don't care about the money, do you? Please talk to me. Bonnie, I have an idea. I have a, a very crazy, very good idea. About what? Well, I wouldn't blame you for not going through with it. I, I, I'd understand. But what is it? You remember what you said, uh, what you told the old... Yeah, what you told your mother up at the house about your killing yourself? Yeah, I, I remember. Well, she didn't believe you, of course. Uh, what if your mother really thought you were serious about killing yourself? Wouldn't that make her change her mind in a hurry? Well, yeah, I suppose it would, but uh, we, we could never fool her about such a thing. I don't know, no, if we were smart, we could. No, she's smarter than both of us put together. I know her, Davy. There's just no fooling her. Wait a, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. Don't throw it away so fast. Let, let's talk about it. Let's think for a minute. But it just wouldn't work. Yeah, but if you really did try, Bonnie, only you didn't try too hard, only enough to make it look good. Well, how could I do that? There's a couple of ways. Uh, gas, for instance. We could fix up a phony gas suicide. Bonnie, don't look like that. I I'm sorry. All right, forget it. F forget I ever said it. No. No, go on. It could be something like, um, sleeping pills. You've got sleeping pills, haven't you? Yeah, I have. Well, you, you wouldn't have to take more than two. You know, maybe, maybe three. Now, that won't hurt at all. And, and we'd make you think you took the whole bottle. Now, don't you see how easy that'd be? Yes. I, I suppose so. Oh, Davy, hold me, please. Oh, kitten, you could write your mother a letter. You could tell her what you were planning to do, but that I don't know about it, see? You could say you were going to swallow the whole bottle of pills. But you'll actually take just a few. And when your mother shows up here... I'm so scared, Davy. I promise you nothing will happen except that your mother will know that you meant it, Bonnie. About loving me so much. You do love me, don't you? Yes. Yes, Davy. I do. I do. <laughs> There's another famous saying about love, that it conquers all. Presumably, that includes time, distance, and mothers-in-law. But will love and deception succeed together? We'll find out shortly when I return with Act Three. Ever had a tall, frosty glass of amplitude? Well, if your beer is Budweiser, you've had it often. Amplitude is a fancy word for the entire taste phenomenon, the total experience of flavor. Next time you take a healthy swallow of Bud, watch what happens. Think about the sensations you're experiencing. Notice how the flavor of Bud comes on nice and easy. Not too strong, not too quick, just right. Notice the clean, crisp togetherness of Bud's taste. Everything in perfect balance, with no single element jumping out at you. And there'll be no aftertaste either, no hanging on. And you'll be refreshed and ready for another glassful. Actually, Bud drinkers have been experiencing amplitude for years. But they never phrase it that way. They just say Budweiser. And that says it all. Anheuser-Busch. St. Louis. Child of mine, tomorrow is yours. What kind of world will it be? Every mother worries about the future of her children. But needy mothers overseas, barely surviving at the minimum level of existence, worry even more. Their families have never known a day when they were not hungry. They lack water that is safe to drink, medical facilities, schools. They need your help to give their children a chance in life. Through care, you can provide them with food, drinkable water systems, schools and medical care, and the means to help themselves. Help a mother to save a child's life today. 
Please send your dollars to CARE, Department 2, New York, 10016. Things seem very normal in apartment 4G. The one-room residence of the newlyweds, Bonnie and David Snowden. Music is playing on their transistor radio. A frozen dinner is thawing slowly, and Bonnie and David are hunched over the kitchen table, composing a letter. The only thing that makes this domestic scene a bit bizarre is that they are collaborating on a suicide note. Dear love, I warned you what I would do if you tried to get our marriage annulled. Tonight... I'm going to take a whole bottle. Davy, hmm? do we have to have that music? Uh, okay, okay. I, I didn't know it was bothering you. I'm nervous enough as it is. Okay, I said. Dear Mother, I warned you what I would do if you tried to get our marriage annulled. Tonight, I'm going to take a whole bottle of sleeping pills. Oh, Davy, hmm? it just doesn't sound right. Uh, it's, it's not so bad, Bonnie. Uh, uh, look, maybe you'd better put in something about me not knowing about it. Uh, I, I, I think that's important that your mother realizes that I had no idea you were going to try to take your life. Well, maybe you better write it, Davy. I'm just no good at this sort of thing. Uh, yeah, I guess you don't have uh, much experience writing suicide notes. Well, I, I, I just can't help feeling it's wrong. Wrong? How? Well, you know. No, 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 I don't. The only thing that could be wrong about it is if it, if it didn't work. But, okay, if, if you've got cold feet, okay, we'll let your mother go through with it. We'll let that lawyer, Hedinger, get our marriage and know. Is that what you want? Well, you know it isn't. And have you got a better idea than this, have you? No. Then tell me what you want to do, Bonnie. You, you name it. Well, just tell me what to write in the letter. Well, the first line is okay. Only after that, I, I think you should say, um, Davy doesn't know I'm doing this. I didn't want anyone to know so that nobody would stop me. Wait a minute. Not so fast. Oh, well, you don't have to put it down exactly the way I said it. Make it sound like yourself, you know. Yeah, I, I'll try. And, uh, what else? Uh, oh, yeah, say something about, I'm doing this because I love... Davy, because I, I I can't live without him. Yes. Oh, oh, that, that'll make her understand. You see, she, she'll realize that you might try to kill yourself again if she broke us up. And if she loves you, she won't want that to happen, Bonnie. Oh. You, you see? Yes, yes. Hey, come on. You're getting uh. tears all over the letter. Oh, Davy. Go, go on, Bonnie. Now, now sign it. That's right. That's just perfect. Uh, yeah, you got the envelope? Here. Okay, if I get it into the mail now, she'll have it tomorrow morning. Now, she's sure to phone here as soon as she receives it. Davy, she might even call the police. Well, it doesn't matter who she calls. Police, a doctor, it'll be okay. I mean, you'll, you'll really be asleep, Bonnie. You, you'll take just enough pills to put you into a nice, deep sleep. Understand? Yes. I understand. Now, I'll be right back, sweetheart. I'll just run downstairs and mail this, huh? All right, Davy, but, but hurry, hurry back. I, I don't want to be alone. What time is it, Davy? Hmm? Uh, 9.15. Do, do you think Mother got the letter this morning? Well, you never know with the post office these days. Well, that could happen. Even if the letter gets there, she might not be home. She might have left the house early. Doesn't matter, Bonnie. Sooner or later, she'll see it. Well, I, I just don't think it's going to work, Davy. There. That must be her. Do, do, do you think it is, really? Well, there's no doubt about it. I don't know anybody would call me this early in the morning. Well, how, how about the people at your office? No, 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 no. I'm away on a two-week honeymoon, remember? They don't even know I'm in town. Well, Davey, shouldn't you answer it? No, Kit, no. Don't you understand? She's got to get worried enough to do something. And you've got something to do, too. You mean take those pills? That's right, Bonnie. Hey, 
Casey, she stopped growing. She's probably on her way over here right now. Uh, get the pills, Bonnie. Yes, I have them right here. There are only three of them. Okay, yeah, get a glass of water. All right. You're sure it'll be all right? I'm sure, Bonnie. It takes like a dozen of these things to hurt you. You just take a couple. Yeah, and now you better make it all three just to make sure you're fast asleep when your mother gets here. She's only about half an hour away. Well, that's time enough if you take them now. Yeah, all right. You can trust me, Bonnie. You know that. I won't let anything happen to you. Yeah, uh, I know that. I know that, Davy. Okay, now, come on, take the pills, sweetheart. Yes. There. It wasn't so hard, was it? No. Now all you have to do is go back to bed. Go to bed and to sleep. That won't be so hard either. Even without the pills. I slept so badly last night. Yeah, I know. Davy? Yes, kitten? Please kiss me. Kiss me. Good night. One second. Oh, Mrs. Daniels. Where is she? Where's Bonnie? Well, not to take it easy. She's sleeping. Is she all right? Well, what are you talking about? Of course she's all right. She's just asleep. She likes to sleep a little late in the morning, that's all. Bonnie? Bonnie? Hey, now, what, what do you think you're doing, Mrs. Daniels? So let her sleep, would you? She's had a bad night. Look. Look at her color. Look at her. Can't you see this isn't normal? Well, she's always a little pale, so what? Bonnie. Bonnie, can you hear me? It's it's mother. Oh, dear God. Hey, what's the matter with you? You idiot. Where were you? I phoned here about an hour ago. The phone just rang and rang. I was and... out. I went out to get the paper. I just got back a couple of minutes ago. Bonnie, darling. Wake up. Wake up. Oh, why didn't I call somebody? Why didn't I call a doctor? A doctor? What for? Here. Read this. Well, what is it? Where's your telephone? Where is it? Good Lord, this letter is... We need a doctor, you idiot. Bonnie, maybe... Oh, no. Mrs. Daniels. It's... She's dead. She's dead. Oh, she can't be. She's just sleeping, Mrs. Daniels. She... She took the pills. Oh, all those pills. Oh, Lord, that many in that bottle. Maybe, maybe she'll be okay. I'll, I'll get the doctor. It's too late. Too late. She's not dead, I tell you. Bonnie. Bonnie, wake up, kitten. Wake up. It, it, it's all right. Everything is all right. Bonnie, for Pete's sake, it, 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 it's all over now. You, you've got to wake up. Oh, she's, she's so cold. Bonnie, wake up. Leave her alone. Can't you leave that, that poor girl alone? Even now. Mrs. Daniels, I swear there weren't many pills in that bottle. It wouldn't have taken many. Not with Bonnie's heart. It wouldn't take... Well, it wouldn't take many. What are you talking about? Bonnie had pneumatic fever when she was 12. Her heart's been weak ever since. Oh. No. No. Bonnie, please. Please. You've got to wake up. Hello. Mr. Snowden? Yes. Walter Hedinger. You, uh, remember me, I trust. Yes, I remember you. Sorry to disturb you. I realize that you're still in uh, mourning, of course. What do you want? I was wondering if you might be able to attend a meeting in our offices at uh, 10.30 tomorrow. A meeting? What for? It concerns your wife's estate. Now, what are you talking about? I've got nothing to do with my wife's estate, and you know it. Bonnie wasn't dead two weeks, and I got a letter from you telling me so. Well, there is still 
something that Mrs. Daniels wishes to discuss with you. Something uh, beyond the, um, shall I say, legality of the situation. Look, if Mrs. Daniels thinks she can make some kind of trouble for me... No, 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 no. It's nothing of the kind. Uh, don't try to kid me. She still blames me for Bonnie's death. She'd do anything she could to hurt me. I assure you, Mr. Snowden, it's to your advantage to attend the meeting tomorrow. My advantage? That's correct. Because I can promise you one thing. Mrs. Daniels wants to do the right thing. <laughs> Come in, Mr. Snowden. Yes, yes. Uh, how are you, Mrs. Daniels? I'm as well as I can be, thank you. Yes, of course. Don't look stricken, young man. Nobody's going to hurt you. Have a chair. Um, uh, thank you. Well, let's get started, shall we? Mrs. Daniels, as you know, we've already informed Mr. Snowden that he has no... Legal claims on your daughter's estate. Yeah, I uh, know all about that. But did you explain why? You see, Bonnie's inheritance from my late husband wasn't due until she reached the age of 21. Since her death, it automatically reverts to me. I didn't expect anything, Mrs. Daniels. A very kind of you, I'm sure. However, Mr. Snowden, the fact that you did marry Bonnie imposes a certain kind of obligation on me. Some kind of gesture regarding your welfare. I don't understand. And Mr. Snowden, you seemed most impressed by that old house we own upstate. You recall the one I mean? Yes, uh, of course. It was once valued at a great deal of money. And it's yours. Uh, what, what was that? I'm deeding you the property. It would have been Bonnie's in a few more years. I have no further use for it. You may have complete possession of the land, the house, and everything in it. Everything? You, you, you really mean everything? Of course. Mr. Hedinger will see to the formalities. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go. What? Gee, Mrs. Daniels, Please I... don't thank me. I can stand anything from you now except gratitude. Good day. Well, let's uh, take care of the details. Uh, Mr. Hedinger, could I uh, ask just one question? Yes. When Mrs. Daniels said I could have everything in that house... Uh, well, there, there are certain places, uh, locked rooms and, and, and things like that. A am I entitled to all of the contents? You're entitled to every stick in the place, Mr. Snowden. In fact, uh, Mrs. Daniels left you this full set of keys. It's all mine. The whole house, mine. God knows how much it's worth. Hey, sure, it's run down, but uh, the furniture alone. Now, where's that light switch? Yeah, here it is. Yeah, what did Bonnie call it? A terrible old barn. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but it's all mine, sweetheart. It's Davy's barn now. Uh, maybe it's not a million bucks, but it's something. Uh, where are the rest of those keys? Mm, a dozen keys, but one of them must open that door. Yeah, one of them will do it, so let's just get going, baby boy. Uh, it was really something had given me this house. Well, uh, no bless oblige, I guess. I gotta give the lady credit. She's got class. Uh, let's see, it wasn't this full... No, it was the next... There'll be a very good reason for locking up a room. There's got to be something very valuable inside. And yeah, that's the door. That's the one. Okay, now to find the key. No, no, not that one. This is, no, it's obviously too small. I don't know about this one. No, oh, that didn't do it. This one's too big. Not yet. I hope it's here. The lawyer said they were all here. I'll try this one. Well, that slipped in all right, but will it turn? Wait a minute. It's stuck. 
but I think it's going to do it. I think it's going to work. Uh-uh. That did it. That did it. The lock's open. All I got to do is open the door. Mm. Pretty dark in there. Shades are down. Uh-huh. But I see a lamp over there. Some more sherry, Walter? Uh, uh, no, thank you, Mrs. Daniels. Well, stop looking so grim, Walter. Sit back and relax. Uh, Mrs. Daniels, I can't help but worry about... Uh, oh, about what happened. Worry? About that scoundrel? You know what I mean. When that police lieutenant questioned me about Snowden's death... Well, I didn't actually lie to him, but... I didn't tell him the whole truth, either. You were completely honest, Walter. I'm sure you were. No, I wasn't. You see, I'm absolutely sure you knew what you were doing when you deeded that house to him. Of course I knew what I was doing. I was being generous. But you knew what would happen, didn't you? Yes, Walter, I knew. I knew there was no treasure behind that door. Only the rotten floorboards that made us shut up the room 15 years ago. I used to argue with my husband about it. I used to say that we should have the floor repaired before someone fell through to the basement. But he was a strangely miserly man sometimes. Not nearly as generous as I am. Now drink your sherry, Walter. What can you say about an 18-year-old girl who dies? Or her 30-year-old lover, for that matter? Regretfully, this love story has ended with both the lovers gone, which ought to make it twice as popular as the movie. I'll be back shortly. Who knows how to help you solve your shopping problems? The Better Business Bureau. Clock. I'm back at the office working on the case when my secretary brings me the mail. Thanks, kid. The usual stuff. Then I see it. It's addressed to me, resident. Inside, a fake rabbit's foot. The pitch, a $2 donation or send back the rabbit's foot. My problem, what to do about it. help you with good advice from the Better Business Bureau. Oh, yeah? Spill it. If you receive unordered merchandise in the mail, you are under no obligation to return it or pay for it. Thanks, pal. You're okay. Just another consumer tip from your Better Business Bureau. Snowden isn't the last victim you'll hear about on our Radio Mystery Theater. We intend to bring you the final dying screams of many, many more. That's a specialty of radio, of course, which explains why we give all our actors scream tests. Our cast included Carmen Matthews, Corinne Orr, Jack Grimes, and Sidney Smith. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. I know I'm no sort of expert, but can't you talk about your work with me? There's a reason for it, Lisa. There's a reason. For well, what? I told you, my... My nightmares, they're all visions in... black and gray and slashes of red. <laughs> well, then if you won't talk about your paintings... Why not tell me about your nightmares? You wouldn't enjoy hearing about them. Or rather, about it. It? I have only one nightmare. Just one. I have it virtually every night. Sometimes it follows me into the daylight. I can close my eyes and there it is. For years I've tried to destroy it by painting it. 
Not its details, just its colors. But the therapy hasn't worked. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Anheuser Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. WPAM, Kansas City.